And now time for the... Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, esteemed Nobel laureates, ladies and gentlemen. The Medicine Prize. Phileas Fogg, the main character in Jules Verne's acclaimed novel, Around the World in 80 Days, could not have suffered from jet lag during his trip, despite crossing multiple time zones. His body had plenty of time, more than three days per time zone, to get adjusted to the time differences encountered along his journey. Today, in the era of jet travel, we can cross several time zones in only a few hours, but our bodies suffer as they struggle to adapt to the new time of our destination. Many of our foreign guests this evening are truly experiencing this now. Why can't our physiology adapt more rapidly? What keeps it behind? Our physiology is regulated by an internal clock that generates daily rhythms known as circadian, from the Latin circadian, meaning around one day. Circadian rhythms are ancient and exist in all forms of life. Life on Earth is adapted to the rotation of our planet, and the internal clock anticipates day-night cycles, helping organisms optimize their physiology and their behavior. Although the existence of the biological clock has been known for nearly a century, only recently have we begun to understand what is it made of and how it keeps ticking. Our story begins in 1729, when French astronomer Jean-Jacques de Marin took a mimosa plant, which leaves are open during the day but close at night, and placed it in constant darkness. He observed that the leaves still open and close rhythmically at the appropriate time, suggesting an endogenous origin of the daily rhythm. Physiology is controlled by genes, and the biological clock is no exception. In 1971, Seymour Benzer and Ron Konopka isolated mutant flies that had alterations in their normal 24-hour cycle of activity. Fifteen years later, Jeffrey Hall and Michael Rosbach, working together at Brandeis University in Massachusetts, and Michael Young at Rockefeller University in New York, isolated that mutated gene called period. As instrumental as this was, however, the isolation of the period gene did not tell very much about the mechanism of the biological clock. It was a remarkable series of discoveries made during the 1990s by these year's Nobel laureates that finally elucidated how our biological clock ticks. The basic principle first proposed by Jeffrey Hall and Michael Rosbach is deceptively simple. The period gene produces a protein that accumulates in the cell and after reaching a certain level blocks the gene and hence its own production. As the protein levels subside, the gene becomes active again and the cycle resumes. As many things in biology, however, the devil is in the details as it was still unclear how the period protein can be stabilized long enough and then enter the cell nucleus to inhibit its own production. Michael Young discovered two additional genes, he named them timeless and double time, that partnered with period and together contribute to the generation of robust oscillations of approximately 24 hours. The discomfort of jet lag is evidence of the strength of our biological clock, as it takes time for the machinery to readjust to the sudden change in environmental conditions. Although sunlight is scarce this time of year in Stockholm, the good news is that food is also a strong resetting stimulus. So the banquet that follows after the ceremony will surely help toward adjusting our turner clocks. The 2017 Nobel laureates have uncovered a mechanism controlling a truly fundamental process in physiology, how our cells and bodies keep time. Such timekeeping is essential for adaptation and has important implications from human health, not just jet lag, but also the incidence of chronic syndromes such as cancer, metabolic and sleep disorders, 
and several neurological conditions. Professors Hall, Rosbach, and Yang. Your brilliant studies have solved one of the great puzzles in physiology. Your discoveries have unraveled the cogs and wheels of the biological clock, an essential mechanism for the survival of life on our planet. On behalf of the Nobel Assembly at the Karolinska Institute, I wish to convey to you our warmest congratulations. May I now ask that you step forward to receive the Nobel Prize from the hands of His Majesty the King. That was Professor Carlos Ibanez, a member of the Nobel Committee for Physiology or Medicine, speaking, holding the pr presentation speech of the Medicine Prize. First to receive it is Geoffrey Hall. Born in the United States, <laughs> Professor Emeritus for the University of Maine. <laughs> Michael Rosbash, also born in the United States, American, affiliated with the Brandeis University. To his wife, Nadja Abovic, to the farmer's right here in blue. And finally, Michael Young. Who is affiliated with the Rockefeller University. <laughs> Jeff Hall and Michael Rosbash having worked together very tightly and also as friends uh, and Michael Young with his team both teams racing to the same discovery in competition with each other now on the stage together finally receiving this recognition together <laughs> 